flowers, I guess. Don't you ever send your wife flowers? No. Oh, that sounds bad. It's a new day. Yes, it is. You know, there are over 200 species under the genus Rosa. And there's a, a, a rose database that has, I think it was over 6,000 variations of roses. Seems almost excessive. <laughs> Here. Thank you very much. Can I give you a tip? <laughs> no, nothing. You sure? It's okay. Well, I'll be sure to tell the owner of this place what a great staff he has. You just did. You? You're the owner. No, I, I really am. <laughs> oh, I apologize. I, um, you know, I thought you were just the gardener. That's an easy mistake to make. I saw you watering the plants. And, um, well, plants need to be watered. Yes, they do. Thanks again. Can I ask you a favor? Yeah, sure. I'm here for a, a, a board meeting. Yeah, I know. You were at the House of Promise, right? Yes, and I've got to give this to the executive director, but I don't know what room she's in. Oh, I'm, I, I'm, I can find it. Well, actually, could you give it to her for me? Yeah, sure. Is it important? No, it's just, um, just some papers. Okay, yeah. And if you could give it to her this afternoon, after I've left. Yeah, I can do that. Appreciate it. So you shift your thoughts from what can I get to how can I offer, how may I serve? If your attention is off yourself and about giving, the universe will respond by giving back to you. The universe will say, how may I serve you? But you have to be in a place of service yourself. That's when the transition is complete, when you move into that place that is without ego. Hey there. Hi. Missed you yesterday. Had a great game. Yeah. Got stuck in town. Yeah, I understand. Things come up. Yes, they do. Uh, how'd the meeting go? Nothing changed. They still need the money. But once they get the money, we'll see who gets the contract. See you in the city. All right, see you. Boy, not so fast. Don't tilt it. No, we don't want to crush the flowers. That's very good. Oh, I'm telling you, you don't want to know how much these flowers cost, you know? It's the same floors the mayor uses. Now, oh, be careful, please. Thank you. How about the name Rose, if it's a girl? As we move into the meaning phase of life, it's not as if you no longer are ambitious. It's that you have ambition with meaning. You're ambitious about other things. So now your ambition is transformed into purpose, and you have to learn to become the observer and to step back. You begin to live in process, trusting where your source is taking you. You begin to detach from the outcome. And that detachment allows you to no longer be fighting. It allows things to just come to you. And you're no longer being the person who's making things happen. You're allowing them to show up. The fight is gone. So I get asked over and over again, is, is there a purpose to the ego? And my reaction to that is, it's just, it's just not worth defending. The ego is the thing that will, is the false self. And when you're defending it, you're defending an illusion. You're defending something that really isn't who you are. Your authentic self is way beyond the ego. Every one of us knows that we came here with music to play. And yet we have a tendency to believe that we are separate entities and that uh, we have to fit in and that's our role in life. And, and none of that is true. The shift can happen in many ways. It can be just a comet. It can be a coincidence that occurs, a particular event that uh, you weren't expecting. It can be anything at all. But the result is always the same you begin to realize that you're not here to push life, to make it a struggle all the time. You're here to enjoy and to be living in peace. That's what happens when you're in the afternoon of your life. I was just thinking about all the things I have to do to pack us up to leave. Oh, yeah? 
nothing like a walking to-do list. I think 90% of my day is spent managing everyone else's life and all their problems. Uh-oh. You are very appreciated. That's not what I mean. I love taking care of you and the boys. I do. I love my family, but... But? When I paint, I go somewhere. I, I feel connected. I, I feel blessed. And you're good at it. I miss it so much. On the hike yesterday, and Jack told me that I don't paint. I realize that my own children have no idea who I am. They don't even know what I do. So do it. Really? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I want to stay here. What? Just for a week. Right now, just, just this next week. What, are you thinking of leaving here all alone? Jason, every cell in my body wants to stay here just a little bit longer. Just... I'm, um, I'm hearing you, but um, I, have, I have no idea what you're saying. I need to reorient myself. I need to find my way back, and I need solitude to do it. Quinn, you're a mother of two small children. You don't, you, don't, you don't get solitude. Jason, you have to know I love you. And I love the kids, and I... I am still us, but I am more than this. Okay. There's just one problem. See, I don't, I don't know how to do what you do. Oh, you'll be great. It's just for a week. You'll survive. And then we go back to normal. I don't know about that. Oh. Oh, oh, you're good at this. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> you know what you're gonna get good at? What? Laundry. I see lots of laundry in your future. That's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> If you want to see the doors open in your life, you detach yourself from what the ego says, and you allow yourself to live from this divine place called spirit. And what Lao Tzu called the virtues, he said there are four of them. The first of these is reverence for all of life, which is respect. The second is sincerity, which is really nothing more than just honesty. The third is gentleness, which manifests itself as kindness in our life. And the fourth is supportiveness, which just manifests itself as service, offering service to others. Those are the four virtues. And Lao Tzu asks us to live by them. There's a, there's a great quote by the poet Hafiz. He said, even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Just think what a love like that can do. It lights up the whole world. Doing? <laughs> so did you get everything you need? I think I got even more than that. Really? I'm actually inspired. I, I was looking at some of the footage. I'd love to do something with these interviews, something creative. Like what? Well, this place. 
there's something happening here. What you're talking about, the people, themes, I think I can really do something with Wait this. a second, wait a second. I thought you were just a technician on this here. Isn't that what I heard you say before? Ah, I guess not. I think I'm getting it. Well, you know, David, the point is we're all going to get it. Ultimately, we're all going to get it. There's a great line from A Course in Miracles where Jesus says, if you want to be like me, knowing that we are alike, I will help you. If you want to be different than me, I will wait until you change your mind. And you will change your mind. And really, isn't it the ultimate thing is, why should we have to die in order to get it? We ought to be able to get it while we're here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. Nobody needs to ask the question, what is my purpose? It will always be found in service. If you can just for one day put your attention on making life better for someone else, if you can focus on thinking like that, that's how God thinks. It's an ancient concept, but it's still relevant. To touch someone's life is more valuable than any amount of money. My friend Byron Katie says, to believe that you need what you don't have is the definition of insanity that you can't be fulfilled until you get all these things, that's an illusion. Really, you don't need anything more. It doesn't matter what it is you do. You could be a cab driver, a teacher, a factory worker, a manager. What matters is that you put your attention on how may I serve. Think of the people you go to, whoever you are in your path. You can run an entire business this way, not being attached to outcome, putting attention on service. Your life becomes about living those virtues. How can I serve? How can I be gentle? How can I be reverent? Thinking like that means you're living in meaning. The messages of the morning are about what you can and can't do, about how society defines you. But in the afternoon, after the shift, it's about connecting to an energy that's taking care of everything. And we're all just being done. Try to stop yourself from breathing, from your fingernails growing. Living the virtues is all we need to do. The truth is, I feel something else is in charge of all of this. So it's really about surrendering to it. Surrendering to something that is bigger than you, that you are connected to, and that's really in control of everything. There's a place deep within us that wants to feel fulfilled. That wants to know that my life has made a difference that I've left this place, this planet that I've lived on, better than when I arrived. That someone's life has been profoundly touched because of my existence. We all want that. It's not about age or about finding yourself. Wherever you are, at whatever age, you're only a thought away from changing your life. This is not a race You don't have to run You might even slow it down Take a look around Instead of chasing everyone Nothing to prove No point to make If when it's said and done You know in your heart That your song is sung With your song still inside you, let it guide you every day. We all know that it's good to be humble, but don't mumble your life away. You could lose it all You would still feel like you'd won You might fall out of the sky Learn to fly just by reaching for the sun 